On the last video, we started talking about biodiversity or the great variety that exists in life. And we talked about the fact that there's great variety from the atomic to the organism level, which allows the existence of so many shapes or forms, and that makes life have lots of functions. That is a manifestation of the genetic diversity that exists in the DNA genome of all living things on Earth. Now, this genetic diversity exists because there's a lot of different kinds of species. And this species diversity is part of what maintains uh, the ecosystems of the world. But then we have to worry about the fact that many of these species are suffering because of changes that are occurring at the global scale. Lots of species are becoming uh, threatened and even endangered. And that as they become smaller and smaller, or the numbers decline faster and faster, it becomes harder and harder for the species to bounce back from the situations. We also talk about the fact that population diversity is important for tolerance to environmental changes and for exploration of different niches and therefore for the evolutionary process. And we talked about the fact that community diversity and ecosystem diversity protects complex relationships that exist in the environment since everything is interdependent. And that allows the environment to be more stable in the, in the face of change, just like animals can be more stable in the face of change if there's a lot of diversity within their populations. Likewise, ecosystems diversity will help protect the ecosystem if the world is changing. That's called ascendancy. Um, we also talk about the fact that biome diversity and diversity at the, at the biosphere scale also helps in many ways, from medicine to technology, regulation of climate, purification, pest control, soil quality, all of these things are tied in to the amount of diversity that exists in the world. So richness of, of, the, of the life is very important. How do scientists assess this richness? It's important to realize that, we, that you need to define species in a certain way before you can do that. So it's very important to have some sort of categorization of what is a species. Also, it's very important to establish categories which are, are, are well known ahead of time and make sure that these categories are equally different from each other. So like you're not saying, for example, oh, all the groups of rodents and you're comparing that with a diversity of amphibians. That's a lot more diversity in amphibians than there is in the rodents, so it's, it, it would be wrong for you to compare levels which are completely different from each other. You also have to consider the importance of each kind of species within the ecosystem, and because sometimes the diversity, that matters for the diversity too. Uh, for example, keystone species, foundation species, uh, dominant species, they have a greater impact on the ecosystem, so diversity is also more important than the diversity of other things. Likewise, you have to... Uh, Consider how closely knit the communities actually are and how much uh, interaction is actually happening at the community level so that you can uh, think about how important the diversity actually is. But considering all these factors, scientists measure diversity in three different ways. They measure the diversity by simply counting how many different types of species will occur in the environment. And that's the richness method of, of basically counting the numbers of species that exist. So you see the graph on the right side there talking about the fact that the greater the species richness is, the more evapotranspiration you're going to have. And evapotranspiration is a measurement of how much water is cycling through the ecosystem, and it's a good way to indicate how much primary productivity is going on. And remember, if there's a lot of primary productivity, it's probably good news for the ecosystem. Another way of doing it is called the Simpson Index, and that's what you see on the left side. On the Simpson Index, it doesn't just consider how much the types of life you have, but also the relative contribution of each of type of life. For example, if you look at community one versus community two, which one would be more diverse? Well, they both have the same number of species, but community one uh, has a more balanced amount of species, while community two has a predominant uh, contribution of species A and very little of the other ones. So perhaps community one will be a little more diverse in that sense. And you can also use at what is called the Shannon Wider Index. Now, the Shannon Wider Index it modifies the, the the Simpson Index by considering also the importance of each one of these species within the ecosystem and how many uh, how much diversity exists within each of the species. So, in other ways, how many types of living things exist within each species. So as you can see, there's many different ways to go about measuring the diversity. And whichever way you use it, it's important to understand that diversity is crucial for ecosystems.